Uh, hi once again. Uh, as announced, I will be talking about uh, polishing free-to-play games for LTV and retention with uh, Firebase. Uh, so, some of you may know me from the yesterday presentation, but uh, let me just briefly repeat. So, my name is uh, Mariana. I am CMO at Pixel. I've been with the company for about uh, seven years, and I've been doing different roles that led me to be where I am now. And now I lead a team of, of about 14 people who cover different areas of marketing, like uh, UA, data, monetization, uh, customer support, QA, ASO, graphics. So uh, we have it all. And uh, before we get to the agenda, just a few words about Pixel. So we are video games and apps developer and publisher from Niš, Southern Serbia. Uh, we've been in business for 10 years and uh, we have built a portfolio of around 200 apps and games uh, with uh, more than half a billion downloads. And as for our agenda for today, I will be talking briefly about testing process. Uh, after that, I will show you one of our games uh, which we optimize with uh, Firebase. Uh, then I will uh, show you some of our uh, test and optimization uh, examples, both for gameplay and ads. And uh, finally, I will wrap it all together with some uh, valuable advice for you. So let's get to business. So <laughs> first, uh, when it comes to testing process, uh, these are a couple of things that you should keep in mind. So uh, the length of the test, the number of users, and the frequency of testing. So uh, when it comes to the length of the test, uh, in our own examples, our tests usually last between uh, 10 and 30 days. Uh, so long enough to collect enough number uh, of users. Um, then, uh, when it comes to number of users, uh, we um, tend to have about 1,000 users uh, per uh, test. Uh, but of course, uh, the more users, uh, the more accurate uh, results would be. So, uh, try to aim for that. And uh, finally, the frequency of testing. Uh, I cannot tell you here one, two, or three times, but I can tell you that we have a strategy and uh, uh, that we uh, we are planning our test uh, ahead. So uh, with each test, uh, we try to achieve some uh, different goals, uh, which I will be showing you uh, later in the slides. So this is one of our logic puzzle game in uh, which uh, users interact with uh, different items, uh, solve some mini games um, in order to break the code and uh, escape or open the door. Uh, the gameplay is uh, linear. It consists of between uh, 100 and 150 levels uh, that are not connected to each other. Uh, the currency that we, that we used in the game are coins, and we also have two kinds of help, as you can see. So we have hint and skip. Uh, hint can show one step in the game to the users, and uh, with uh, skips, uh, the players can either skip the mini game or uh, the whole level. And uh, I want to emphasize here that almost 90% uh, of the tests that I will show you today, uh, you can apply to your games with uh, similar gameplay. So first, technical setup. Uh, as you can see here, um, when we are preparing the game uh, before the launch, uh, we are setting up all events for data tracking. But from the gameplay perspective, I will mention two today. So the first one is a level completed, and the second one is uh, level details, uh, which we use to divide the, each uh, level in steps. Uh, for detail events and naming, as you can see on the right side, uh, we use different uh, parameter values uh, to write um, uh, each step from the beginning of the level to the last click uh, in that level. And both events serve to uh, detect uh, critical uh, dropouts, either between the level, uh, between the levels, or inside the particular level. And now I will show you how we optimize gameplay progress. So first, 
we detect critical dropouts and we check detailed events. So we got a report like this after the launch from our data team. And the numbers marked red are actually detected critical uh, dropouts. And as you can see, in the first level, um, the, the dropout rate was 28%. And now I will show you how we fix it. So again, we identify critical steps. Uh, for example, um, some item was hidden too much, or it was too small, or the players can break the code, so we assume that the, that the clue isn't clear enough. So we suggest correction, we implement it, and after that, we check new results to see if there are any improvements. So as you can see in this particular example, uh, we were losing 60% of the users on uh, level started. So it, it was during the intro dialogue, so we decided to shorten it. Also, uh, that level consists of many um, tutorials explaining different game mechanics. So we decided uh, to cut off some parts and uh, to move it to another level. And let's see the result. So before, uh, as uh, if you remember, the dropout rate in the first level was 28%. And after implementing all those changes, uh, that uh, uh, dropout rate decreased to only 6%. Okay, now uh, we will start with the test. Uh, I have uh, seven tests for you today. Uh, that maybe sounds like a lot, but hang in there because we had really uh, great uh, results and the best of all, you can apply to your similar uh, games. So the first test in order is a level order test. Uh, so we also use uh, Firebase for uh, different A-B tests. Uh, this is one of them. So after we uh, polish uh, the gameplay, we experiment with uh, three different difficulty curves. Uh, so that basically means that we never rely on only one level order version. So the baseline here is the um, colored in blue. So that level order uh, starts where level, level starts from the simplest one and then goes uh, gradually to the hard difficult ones. And we tested it against the variant A, uh, which is colored uh, in red, where the level uh, levels go from the simplest one to the uh, medium difficult one, and so on. And finally, against the variant B, where levels go from the simplest one to the high difficult one, and so on. So let's see the results. So the variant A, if you remember, colored in red, uh, has led to better revenue for 67%, along with the better retention for uh, 80 to 80, oh, sorry, 28%. Uh, so that uh, variant outperformed the others for uh, both metrics, so both uh, the revenue and the retention, and we decided to roll out uh, this uh, variant for all users. Next. Uh, here we have new feature uh, release test. So basically the idea behind this test was to engage users more. So previously we didn't have any story and we came up uh, with the idea to implement uh, short uh, dialogues uh, between levels. So we tested uh, the version without any story uh, against the version where we implement uh, those dialogues. And let's see who's the winner here. So, when we show story to the users, the revenue is better for 63%. The retention is, is also better for 11%. So again, we had no doubt here and we implemented that version to all users. Okay, now we can move to add a format test. So uh, basically, we, when we test uh, uh, different ad formats, we always strive to have a balance between the revenue and the retention. So yes, our goal is most, most of the time to maximize the revenue, but not uh, to hurt the retention and the engagement at the same time. So for the first test, uh, in soft launch, a default version consists of only rewarded video, and uh, we tested uh, it against rewarded and interstitial, rewarded and banner, and finally against the mix of all three at the formats. 
Oops. And here are the results. Uh, so uh, the variant where we show uh, three ad formats to users has um, um, led to better LTV for 122%. Although, as you can see, the retention dropped a little bit here. But again, given that uh, our main KPI for this test was to solely uh, increase the revenue, we decided to roll out this version. But I want to emphasize here that if our goal was different, uh, we, we would go with some different uh, ad format mix. Now, when we decided on end formats, I will show you now how we optimize different ad placements. Uh, so, uh, this is an um, example for interstitial ad placement. So, we have some standard setting for uh, that placement. We have interstitial on level start and interstitial on uh, level end. And along with the ECPM, uh, you should uh, measure the um, metrics like uh, CTR, revenue share, and impression share. And as you can see here, uh, the greatest revenue share is with uh, interstitial on uh, level end. And of course, we decided to, to keep up that placement. And for the interstitial on level uh, start, uh, we decided to disable it because uh, it, ha it had poor metrics and also it uh, negatively affected the user um, engagement and experience. And now I will show you how we optimize the rewarded video ad placement. As you can see on this slide, we have uh, again also some standard setting for rewarded video. Uh, we have it in a shop in some places. Uh, we have it for double reward and after level uh, completion. And uh, let me show you uh, the metrics. So again, uh, we measure ECPM. And for rewarded video, uh, we uh, look at the completion rate, the revenue share, and watch uh, uh, number of watched video per users. And as you can see here, uh, the completion rate was uh, almost the same across all ad placement for rewarded video. So we kind of concentrate on uh, two other metrics. And again, uh, the greatest revenue share is uh, for rewarded video in shop. So we decided to keep up that placement. And for other placement, we decided maybe uh, either to disable them or to further optimize them. So maybe you can think about um, different uh, design for that uh, placement or maybe to change the, to improve uh, uh, the visibility or maybe you can think about uh, changing the reward that you're giving to users. <clears throat> now add frequency and capping tests. So for interstitial ads, uh, this is the um, uh, level-based dead frequency test for interstitial. Uh, default uh, variant here was to show interstitial ad after two levels, and we tested it against three, four, and uh, five levels. And let's see what we have here. Uh, so... Uh, we have a clear winner here. So uh, when we show that interstitial um, ads after three levels, both metrics are better. So the LTV was better for 63%. Uh, the retention was also better for 25%. So no doubt here. And we decided to roll out this to all, ver uh, to all users. And when it comes to rewarded video, uh, we tested at capping. So default version has uh, no limit, so no cap at all. And we tested it against two and three impressions per day. And the results again. Uh, so, when we show um, the user's um, rewarded video three impression per day of rewarded video, uh, the LTV is better for, uh, as you can see, 31%, although, again, the retention uh, dropped a little bit. But uh, given that, again, our goal here was to increase uh, the revenue, uh, we made a decision to put the cap on three impression of rewarded video per day. And then the last test for today is a reward value test. So <clears throat> we were testing different rewards after level completion. 
uh, default variant here is uh, free hint, which is equal to 200 coins. And we tested it against double coins, triple coins, and 100 coins. And let's see who is the winner here. So, uh, when uh, we rewarded users with uh, double coins, uh, the LTV is uh, better for 52%. Uh, the retention uh, was almost the same. Uh, so, we made a decision uh, to roll out this uh, double coins variant to all users. And the same test, but for a different group of players. Uh, so, uh, we tested different rewards for uh, rewarded video on non-watchers. So, the idea behind this test was to practically engage more that um, rewarded video on non-watchers with some bigger rewards. And default here was uh, 100 coins, and we tested it against uh, 200 coins. And the results. So, again, a clear winner here. Uh, when we reward uh, that uh, segmented group of players, so rewarded video on non watchers with uh, double coins, uh, the LTV is better for 92%, along with uh, better retention uh, for 3.3%. Uh, uh, so, again, uh, the decision was to uh, roll out this double coins variant for uh, rewarded video non watchers. Okay, and then uh, to end my presentation here, uh, I would like to tell you that um, it is very important to play in your data and test ahead in order to know what you're looking for. Then, of course, to run all those tests to see which ones are the winner and to implement it. And the last, but probably the most important one, is to analyze everything and um, uh, to learn from your tests, even from the failed one, because uh, sometimes tests are going to work, sometimes not, but you just have to give it a try. Um, sometimes you have to be bold enough. <laughs> sometimes you just need to make a tiny little changes to make things better, uh, but uh, keep testing. Yes, until you die, uh, because you will gain a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience for all of, all of your future project and for uh, entire team. And with that, I would like to conclude my presentation here. Thank you very much for attention. Thank you for a great presentation. Thank you. Uh, of course, questions. <laughs> Uh, are there any questions? Oh. Okay. Great presentation. Yeah. Uh, pretty much here Thank you. Tribe. I have a question about, I think, the last test that you showed. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any theories why double coins is less, is more appealing than triple coin, triple the coins? Like, you get mm. less value and people still click on it more no the mm -hmm. one before mm -hmm. let me go back this, this one um, well i do not have the right answer to this so we just test and you need to test to to find the right um, uh, reward for for your users and here where it's revenue this is ad revenue uh, that yeah. you are measuring yeah. okay thanks thank you uh are there any questions okay <clears throat> Uh, we do we do a lot of testing in terms of uh, frequency capping and, and banners, interstitials, rewarded, and so on. Okay. And one thing we struggle with is that once you expose the user to more advertisers and to more ads in general, okay. it takes a quite a while until the ad networks are uh, changing ECPMs and so on. It's like basically, what works in the first test, mm -hmm. if you test it in a month from the moment. The LTV is different because the game is differently indexed in the mediations and in the network advertising. How do you tackle this problem? Oh, well, uh, I think that uh, you just need to continue uh, testing after every, mm, I don't know, implementing new changes to game, just uh, um, um, do the same test again, global or by country or, I don't know, something like that. Maybe you, think, think, you can think of something to test it uh, again. Okay, uh, one question then, last. Hi, uh, 
this Hello. this came in particular uh, is it like a mixed monetization with IAPs or ads or mm -hmm. just purely ads? Uh, no, it's not just purely ads, but 90% of the monetization is uh, ads driven. Okay, and the mm -hmm. next question is, uh, mm -hmm. did you check the game economy, how this influence on the game economy, because it's like getting more coins might might be influenced on? Uh, well, uh, actually, I do not have the answer to, to that question, but uh, we can talk later and um, about about that. Again, thank you very much again. Thank you.